Now, so far we've only needed to create components that accepted a single default slot. But of course in real life, for more practical applications, what you'll find is some of your components require multiple slots. So let me show you how to do that in this episode. Maybe each of these sections you see here should be their own little panels or cards. So let's do that now. Into assignment list, we'll say, how about a background color of like gray 700, maybe a little padding, uh, a border, maybe a border color that's slightly lighter than the background color, and then maybe make it rounded. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, and that'll do the trick. So we have these little cards here. But now, as you can imagine, you'll probably want to reuse these cards. So let's see, right now what you would have to do, let's wrap this within a div, like so. And yeah, maybe down here, we will want another card. So what you'll do is you'll return to some place where you already used it. And you'll see, okay, it looks like we have these styles and it looks like there's a heading two that is bold with margin. And yeah, you'll just, you'll paste it on here. Heading two font bold, hello world. And yeah, this will do the trick. So if I come back and give it a refresh, so yeah, it works, but it's not ideal. And of course, as the application grows, uh, there becomes greater opportunity for these things to become out of sync. So we should fix that. Now notice this is right up against the edge. Real quick, let's set a class of grid, mostly so I can add uh, some gap all around the children like that. Okay, so let's do this. Let's create a new component. Uh, we'll call it panel or card, whatever you want. And this will be responsible for our card styling and any behavior we apply to it. So let's come back. I will snatch all of that and move it over. Now for the heading here, we could either use slots or props. And which one you choose just sort of depends on how flexible it needs to be. Let's start with the prop. So maybe we have a prop called heading, all right? props will accept a heading that's a string. So we can use the mustache syntax here, or don't forget, you could also use a uh, vtext. Same thing. Cool, so now let's use it. As always, we import it, and we register it as a component, and then we use it. Panel, heading is hello world. Okay, so if we come back and give it a refresh, we get the same thing. Perfect. But yeah, what will end up happening is this will be fine for a while, but then you'll need to create a panel where the heading has some kind of icon. or Maybe there's some SVG or a small tag uh, that you want to be included there, but you're not sure how to do it because you're just passing this in as a string. So you can make these a little more flexible by switching over to slots like this. If we know it's always gonna be an H2, we could then say, well, here is a slot. And now within this H2, you can put whatever you want um, and it'll be slotted in there. Okay, so now we do this. Hello again. Switch back, refresh, and it works. And yet, yet again, I can, if I need to nest some SVG there, uh, it's going to work. I'm not limited to just a string prop. Cool. But next, of course, maybe we want uh, a body section to go below it. So now we're in a situation where we need more than just a default slot. We also want something down here. But now we need a way to distinguish between these two. Which one is the default slot? Uh, and we solve this by applying a name. Why don't we say this is our default slot and this one has a name of heading. So if this is heading, this is effectively default. Same thing. Okay, cool. So now when we switch back, I can say, okay, this is my default content. And if we come back, that will be inserted there. But actually, as it turns out, there's a long form way that we can do this. We can add a template tag here. I'll paste that in. And then we can use this V slot directive and we'll need to give it the, the name of the slot. It's default. So this should do the exact same thing, and it does. It's sort of the long form way of declaring your default slot. Now I show you this because if we also want a heading slot, we're gonna use the exact same approach. The slot for the heading. And again, notice this is coming from this. So if I change this to title, then I would come back here and I would say the slot title. 
Okay, so now if I come back and refresh, we're up and running here. Okay, so granted, it's a little more verbose, I get it, uh, but it's also a little more flexible. So you just have to decide which one is appropriate. And don't forget, because your default slot is assumed, uh, you can remove this, and that would still do the exact same thing. Okay, but now, yeah, what about situations? Let's do this. Uh, let's create another panel. And we'll say this top one only has some text, but this second one also has a heading. Let's see how it deals with that. Okay, it seems like it's fine, but one little issue is if we go up here, you'll see that it's still rendering the H2 tag. Uh, it's just an empty tag. Eh, we, don't, we don't want that. So let's see what we can do here. It sounds like we wanna say, well, look, only render this H2 if we have a heading slot that is being passed in. So I can do that by saying V if, and all of your slots are going to be stored within this view property called dollar sign slots. So if we have something for heading, and again, that just means if you, if you provided V slot heading anywhere uh, for the component, then and only then should we render an H2. Okay, so I think that should solve the problem. If we take a look, this one doesn't have a heading, so we don't render an H2. This one does, so we do render an H2. And yeah, you can imagine we could do the exact same thing for maybe a footer. This could be your slot for the footer, but we only want to render that if you provided something for the footer. So this is a way that we can create more configurable and flexible components. Let's see what that looks like. If we come back, I will make another component here that has a heading, a default slot, and then maybe also a footer. Click here to learn more, you know, something like that. All right, come back, refresh, and now we have three different ways to display these cards. And granted, I don't have any styling for the footer. What could we do there? Maybe if nothing else, like a, a border on the top, and maybe a little margin, a little padding, and let's set the border color to gray 600. Yeah, just something uh, to make it look a little more pretty. Okay, I'll paste that in. And there we go. And actually maybe we should also make the text smaller in the footer. Yeah, and then finally maybe a little margin bottom on H2, but only if a heading was provided, just to push it down. And there we go. Three different ways to present our card, but we could even take it further. Maybe we also wanna support themes and we'll say we have a light theme and a dark theme. So I could say theme is a string and the default is dark. So what we'll do is read this theme property to determine which classes should be applied. So let's do this. We'll say, this is what we started with, but then we'll say, well, look, um, if the theme is dark, then what CSS classes should be applied? Well, maybe the background color. And then what else? Uh, the border gray, yeah, maybe that's it. Those are the dark theme styles. But if the theme is light, then maybe we'll say, well, in that case, use a background color of white and then maybe a, a border that is gray 300. Okay, let's give that one a shot now. So we'll do yet another panel down here, but this time the panel has a light theme. Come back, refresh, and ooh, that's not working. Okay, so let's use vbind and uh, give it a run. So we load this in the browser and there we go. Oh, you know what? looks like we need to force black text. So we'll say text uh, black if the theme is light and text white if the theme is dark. And there we go. So yeah, the entire point is to demonstrate that if you take a little bit of time, you can slowly build up a set of flexible and configurable components that you can use anywhere in the application. So now the only remaining step is to use this for our assignments. So we'll go into assignment list. Once again, import our panel, register it as a component, and then use it like that. Uh, that will self-close automatically. And then I can get rid of some of these classes because the component is now responsible for that. But a quick little tip, any attributes you pass to a component will automatically be added to the root element of the component. So this allows you to merge in classes from the outside. 
Or for example, maybe, excuse me, for example, maybe you want to give this particular component or panel an ID. Well, it's not like I have to declare an ID prop on panel. No, these are regular attributes and they will be sent through to the top level element of your component. So if I come back and give this a refresh, this should have an ID of my panel and it does. And also notice that width of 60 was merged in with the default classes. So that's a really important technique uh, to be aware of. Switch back, remove the ID, and yeah, we're up and running. So now if we do decide that we need some kind of uh, footer, then just like before, I could say template vslot footer, and then we'll say uh, my footer goes here. And this should now display between or at the bottom of every assignment list, and it does. Okay, so finally, I will leave you with a quick little tip. So just like we have shorthand for declaring event listeners or uh, attribute binding, the same is true for vslot, and that is through the use of the pound sign. So vslot footer or pound footer, exact same thing as you can see here. And yeah, I will almost always take this approach in my own projects. Okay, you're doing great. Let's move on to the next episode.